Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That's the official open. Okay, Mr. Lashley. Oh, yes, it's my turn, isn't it? Uh, join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful day that you have created. And dear Lord, give us the strength and wisdom as we do the business for the citizens of Alamance County today. And dear Lord, we know that all things are possible through you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. I do have an excuse. A, trail, a tree fell through my house. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is one of those opportunities that all commissioners really run for office for, where you can have a proclamation and show support for a worthy cause. Mr. Chair, I think we need to approve the agenda first. Yep. We can do that. Oh. And I just wanted to remind you about the addition we need to make to the, one of the contracts on the consent agenda. And I'll Correct. Do you want to mention what that is now so when we get there we'll be sure. in line? I'd be happy to do that. You'll find at your seats, uh, each of you, there's a copy of an addendum to the municipal engineering contract that should have been uploaded into the agenda software but was not. So I've attached a copy of that, and we'll attach a copy of that when we actually execute the contract. And I might mention to everyone, uh, there was a hold harmless provision and some other things, uh, and I talked to Mr. Stevens, he already caught it as well, and had uh, added the addition to correct that. Yes, that's just a clear question. Do we have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to approve the agenda with the exception of moving item 7C to item 7A, which would allow the court personnel to to consider these courthouse uh, discussion and then get back to their duties. And also, just uh, as previously indicated, item 6C is amended as uh, our county attorney just indicated. Other than that, is there a second? So second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. There we go. Understand that the um, Marie Mar Marty was to be here, and I understand she is not, as to the proclamation. So we will read it, uh, hopefully approve it, but not pass it on to anybody, and there'll be no pictures, uh, because there's nobody here to take pictures on. I don't think you want to just take pictures of us. <laughs> okay. That would be a waste of time. True. Tell you what, I did not bring my glasses. How about Ms. Carter? Read that if you will, please. Uh, Hispanic Family Rotary Day. Whereas the Hispanic Rotary Club, the first of its kind in North Carolina, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving the Hispanic community by fostering unity and cultural understanding, and whereas under the leadership of Chair Lucero Marti, the Hispanic Rotary Club has been an instrumental in bridging the gap between cultures and languages 
emphasizing the importance of community involvement for Hispanic families and children, and <clears throat> whereas the Hispanic Rotary Club, along with various partner organizations, is committed to providing a, essential resources and support to Hispanic families, including school supplies, clothing, health, and education information, and opportunities for children to engage in outdoor activities and educational programs. And whereas the second Saturday in August, specifically August 10th this year, will be celebrated, celebrated as Hispanic Family Rotary Day, an event to be held at Trailhead Church in Graham from 2 to 5 p.m., featuring contributions from Pinnacle Bank, Modern Woodman Financial, the Libre Initiative, Safe Foods Pantry, Alamance Rotary Club, and others. And whereas this event aims to be a beacon of hope for the Hispanic community, encouraging active participation and fostering a sense of belonging and support within the community, and whereas the Hispanic Rotary Club meets every Monday at 6.30 p.m. At, at the Blend in downtown Burlington, North Carolina, and welcomes all to discover the opportunities and support available through Rotary. Now, therefore, we, the Alamance County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the second Sunday in August of each year as Hispanic Family Rotary Day in Alamance County, encouraging all citizens to recognize the contributions of the Hispanic community and support the efforts of the Hispanic Rotary Club and its partners in building a more inclusive and supportive community. Dated this the 5th day of August, 2024. Thank you, sir. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> and we will get that to Ms. Marti, Marti, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, uh, later in the week. Okay, public comments. I can't read the hand. Sean. Oh, Sean, Sean B. Mm -hmm. Sean, your handwriting is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was just told to put it on there in the event we were not speaking under the agenda, so that's more of a belt and suspenders approach, so I'll just leave that to your... All right. It's the one person that has a handwriting as bad as mine. <laughs> uh, I think law school covers that. You start out with a decent handwriting and afterwards... You don't. Okay. Terry Johnson. Yeah, are you going to do the same? Uh, yeah. If, if you allow us to do Absolutely. that at the appropriate time. And Barry Joyce. You allow me to do something, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's on the court. I mean, it's only fair. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is this thing on? Okay. Well, I'm here for about this 30th time about the same thing. Doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere. And uh, I keep hearing all this stuff about our tax department. And, you know, I, I, y'all spending money like water. $40,000 to get an evaluation that basically was not really an evaluation, wouldn't give you anything in writing. Just told you that you're the greatest tax department in the state. And that's ridiculous. And, you know, I, I have given information to commissioners on this board right here. And nothing seems to be happening. To pay $2.6 million because one unqualified commercial appraiser left or retired or whatever is totally absurd. $2.6 million to place one person. I'm going to give you one example. There's hundreds of them in this county, in this state. Union County has 40 employees. Union County. Okay, they take in two hundred and seventy million dollars in tax revenue, property tax revenue. You know how many employees they got? Forty. Alamance County has thirty-two. You know how much they outsource to other people to do? Zero. Commercial zero. Residential. We've got a serious problem here, folks. And I'm not pointing fingers. If you just need to get a licensed commercial appraiser, not somebody that the state says that been, that's been here long enough to be able to play, appraise both. It needs to be a licensed appraiser, somebody with an educational background and the license, not somebody that the state says that it's okay if he doesn't. 
And until you do that, you're just losing millions and millions of dollars. There is no way that 10 businesses in this town are worth the same amount per square foot. And you, these 10 stores, which that's just a nip in the bud. Let's talk about Lytle. Your own tax assessor called me and said, how does Spotsylvania, Virginia get $97 million for Lytle and I can only get 64 because they're threatening to appeal. There's this 97 million Zach building built at the same time, same square footage. And we're get they're getting 97 million their tax rate 77 cents. You guys have got to this has got to be fixed. I mean, you're raising taxes on people in this county and you're cutting, fighting, you know, can't do this, can't do that. Schools don't have enough money. The money is here. These people in this guy in Union County, he keeps telling me, man, y'all booming down there. You're building all this industry on the interstate. All these people are coming in, all these apartment complexes. I mean, you guys have got to get a hold of this. You're going to be raising taxes every week. I would encourage you to stay to the end of the meeting and hear what, if anything, we do. Okay. I don't have time today because I'm moving. <laughs> all right. Do we have a motion as to the consent agenda? A motion to approve. Second. And that's as amended. As, as amended. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? You know. Thank you. And I would note for those that are listening uh, my Zoom or Facebook, whatever, the uh, amended contract will be added to our agenda uh, so you can see that later. In short, correct? The amendment will be added to our minutes and so forth. Sure. We make that happen. All right. We are moving the courthouse 7C to 7A. Um, so Let's have at it. <laughs> uh, good morning, commissioners. I'm going to uh, present uh, an update on where we are with the courthouse renovation process, uh, break down a little bit some of our immediate needs, and hopefully uh, guide us to some decisions today. Um, I know that you guys are quite familiar with the process over the past few years but just for the rest of the audience let me uh, uh, detail what we have done uh, to, to get to this point so we started this five years ago um, did a facility plan to determine what our upcoming court needs were um, and those we adopted that plan in late 2019 so that that plan called for the need for two to four additional courtrooms 15,000 to 25,000 square feet of space for court and court functions and about 15,000 square feet of additional space for county functions. Um, this is a conceptual plan that came with the 2019 facility plan for what the court area could look like over the very long term. Obviously, they weren't uh, suggesting that we build these buildings immediately, but just how, how it might look over the very long term. What they did suggest that we start with was that building in the top right, the office addition. Um, and that was on the schedule to begin construction of that office addition in 2021. Uh, that would have led to the J.B. Allen renovation thereafter in 2023, uh, and then the civil court renovation in 2024, which would move the county offices into where the civil courts currently are. That would have met, met all the ad identified needs um, in the plan. Um, obviously, it's 2024. We're not quite there yet. We're a little behind. A couple reasons for that. Um, the primary one being that our first swing at designing that office edition came back at $99 million. That was a little more than anybody wanted to do. So we took that back to our architects and asked them to value engineer that. Um, they gave us a building for 65 to $75 million, which was still a little more than we're able to to accomplish right of way 
Um, so that was November 2022. Honestly, that's kind of where we are today. We haven't been able to find a building that's priced where we need it um, and have held off on making decisions um, for the future. So this is where we are right now, and I'm going to kind of go through these separately um, to identify uh, the immediate needs, the short-term needs, and the long-term needs. So. Our immediate needs, we've heard from our court system that they have a need for one additional small courtroom one day a week. This would be for a small claims court. They're just, um, I, you know what, I'm going to get out of my depth pretty quickly if I tell you why they need that space and what they're going to do with it. I think we have some experts here on that topic if we want to talk more about that. But they need one more day of a courtroom. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the short-term and the long-term needs moving forward. but. Just to dig in on the immediate needs, uh, they have asked to use this room one day a week. Uh, we've looked at historic civil and J.B. Allen. There are no additional rooms that we can convert to a courtroom immediately um, in any of these buildings. So this is really the only room that is currently available that's set up for a courtroom um, that we would have to give them use of on an immediate basis. So we kind of need to make that decision here whether that's something we want to do or not um happy to pause here to let you guys discuss that and and uh make that decision or we can move forward to the short term let's move forward because i see three different areas that we do need to address today the um, august 5th date which is today question number one question number two is january one the additional courtroom and jury land Yep. Uh, and question number three is the long term. So right. if, we, if you will, let's just cover the overhaul first and then we'll attack those each at the same time or afterwards. Is this discussion on what he's talking about or is this you're just bypassing this all together about this room? This room? Yeah, this room We're would not be... Got there yet. This okay, but it is going to be discussed. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this room would be what we're talking about to fill that, this immediate need. Okay. Um, beyond the immediate, you're right, the next uh, deadline that we have coming up is January 1st when we have a new uh, judge starting. Not a lot of spaces available for renovating that um, in that short period of time, but the one idea that has kind of floated to the top um, is to renovate the current J.B. Allen jury room into a small courtroom. Um, and I've got some pictures of these for those of you who don't uh, do this every day. Um, Let me interrupt there. The reason January 1, uh, we know this, but you folks, some of you do not. Uh, we have a fifth district court judge that will be on board January 1. So we have an immediate need for an additional courtroom. Thank you. Uh, so that would be renovating the, the jury room in the J.B. Allen building to become a small claim courtroom moving the current jury room, moving the jury over to the courthouse annex across the street um, in their conference room. We could have that done by January 1st and the cost of that improvement would be around $50,000. Um, so just for a little bit of visual, this is the current layout of the courthouse with the jury room in it. Um, we don't need to get too, too deep into it. I just wanted to show you where the jury room is and that would become a small claims courtroom um, this is the courthouse annex across the street from us. Um, sorry, not the courthouse annex, the county office building annex. Um, currently houses planning, inspections, veteran services, and some sheriff's department employees. Um, this is a layout that's going to be very hard to read. Um, not that relevant other than to see the big room in the middle of the building is the current conference room. Um, that's where we could... That's the only room in this area where we could house the, the amount of people needed for a jury room. And for those out there, again, that's the second floor of this building in the other section. No, actually. No, it's it's the, excuse me, J.P. Allen building. No. Yeah. So, no, the, jury, the jury room oh, is, this is the, the annex. Jury. Yeah, this would be the new jury room. So this is the, this is the annex, a floor layout of the annex, just to show you there's one big room in the middle. That's what we'd be anticipating for the new jury room. All of the other offices on both sides are occupied. They would stay occupied and continue to try and do business. Um, there is a fair amount of traffic going in and out of there with planning 
and inspections veteran services so you know it's not a seamless integration to put them in there and have them coexist with all those other departments but on a short-term basis we can make it work um, so that's really the only idea we have uh, to get us there by January 1st we have some other ideas for long term we could get those done a little more quickly uh, but but January 1st that's the only thing we think we can get done um, so let's move on to the long-term needs so again we still have those needs identified in the facility study um, of additional courtrooms additional court and clerk space and additional county space um, really going to give you three options for that um, the first being the one we just talked about so the annex building we could renovate that now in the short term put the jury room in there over the long term trying to do the county functions that are in there while having that a jury room is really not a great plan so we could give that building in its entirety to the court system and move the current employees in there elsewhere um, that elsewhere would be up to the elderly services building so this is up on our northern campus by the human services center this building is currently empty it's owned by the county it's in need of some significant repair um, so the long-term plan would be renovate this move planning inspections the current people in that annex building up to the elderly services center um, and give that building to the courts so uh, you're talking about that or that not this one day a week that's completely separate right okay. so the immediate need of one day a week okay. we can do that or not do that but that's not this is I'm, I've moved on to kind of what okay. our long-term options are okay I, I know your millions are going up so I'm just asking well you know it costs four to five million like like everything okay. uh, <laughs> uh, right so that is one proposal these are the long-term solutions and Mr. We'd, Chairman, I think that falls back on why it was a good idea in the first place to have them segregated so that we can have conversation about them one at a time and then make decisions on each one yeah i think we've covered enough at this point that everybody has a general idea so uh subject to the board's approval let's look at the august 5th request uh, and on that my thought is one we're using well, this Mr. well <laughs> Subject to board approval, and I think that's fine with me. Uh, I just want to make sure Mr. Baker continues with the balance of his presentation oh, at the end. Okay. Because yeah. we we aren't all discussed all this. You go 45 or 28 to 37. Oh no, 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 no. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Well, Mr. Porter's making requests. Okay. We'll go ahead and handle the first item. Well, well. Uh, let's first item first. Our, our our room and when to use it. Okay. And as to that only. No, we're not talking about anything okay. in the future. Uh, one, this room is used for a lot of things. We, the county, have a number of meetings, or mental meetings, all kinds of things. Uh, I would say if, if there's uh, such an immediate demand, August 5th today, for a small claims court, that we move that over to the building across the street temporarily the already chairs there uh, different boards are already meeting there on occasion planning board when this room was not available um, had their meetings over in that building and their chairs already there small claims court is scheduled every 15 minutes uh, and miss Edwards you haven't changed that have you small claims scheduled every 15 minutes yes and they're sir, scheduled so you don't have yes sir we do it differently coming. now i'm sorry we do it differently now yes All sir right. you, you don't have an entire courtroom coming in at 9 30. yes sir we do you do small claims wow uh used to be every 15 minutes and they were <coughs> scheduled uh, apparently that's that's changed takes a whole lot of people sitting and waiting uh, not my decision hey, anyway that building is available soon before january 1 uh, unless we're doing renovations for it to be a jury lounge um, and so i yeah i'm encouraged just not to allow this room for small claims for uh, 
Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, you said the building across the street. I wasn't quite clear which room. The old ag building. The building that it, we're talking about moving to Drury Lounge, to. Oh. Um, well, my thoughts are that, first of all, you would need security, which which we don't have in that building. You'd have to add you'd have to add security um, to include both personnel and metal detectors, which I think is not wise for an eight-week request. I mean, to me, this is a reasonable request. Um, the request is one day a week for eight weeks between now and the end of the year. Uh, it's for small claims court, which I think this room would, um, would, would handle. I understand that, be that because it's small claims court, there's a limited amount of hardware um, that the courts would have to bring in in terms of uh, computers. It would just require a laptop, which would be different if you were conducting you know, something, uh, some other kind of court in this space. There's already security downstairs, um, and the need the, the need for this, as I understand it from talking to court personnel, basically too, you've got certainly an increase in the number of uh, of people in the county. They just need more court, more time for court. The other is with the introduction of Odyssey, the electronic system, in the last uh, three months, uh, the number of, of cases that you can move through court has diminished. It's not as efficient. It's not as efficient of a process. The reason is that the, the hearing officer, who's a magistrate, has to physically enter the orders into the system now, which is different than how it used to be. Used to, the clerk could enter the order after the hearing officer pronounces what the order is, so then the hearing officer can move to the next case while the clerk is entering the order. Now it just takes longer. And because it takes longer, you can't throughput as many cases at the same amount of time, and that's a particularly a problem with small claims court because most of the cases in small claims court are summary ejectments, um, and there's a statutory deadline that I think it's seven days with which you have to, to have a hearing after a complaint is filed. And if we don't have these additional spaces, we're going to violate that statute, and you're going to have landlords who just are going to have to get pushed back further and further in getting um, those, those uh, cases heard. So I think it's a reasonable request. I don't see another option, um, and I think, you know, eight. A request for eight times between now and the end of uh, December is is reasonable, and that would help us move cases through the court system, which, which is what we need. So I would support the request. Mr. Thompson. Um, I agree with Mr. Turner. Um, the fact that this is a public building by the citizens is to be used whatever. We have people coming through that door right there all the time because of accessibility that are in that courtroom um, on whenever, what day. Um, no security across the street. Uh, we don't. We don't own this room. This is a room that we too use as public servants, and we'll just have to make the scheduling work because you can't keep adding more stuff temporarily to end up adding more stuff later for more permanent. Because it's just it's just more money. And um, small claims court can be here. The Ace Speedway trial was here. It was just fine. Planning boards at night. It's here. We're at night. We're at day. And uh, whatever else works in here is just a scheduling thing. So, Mr. Lashley. Well, I tend to agree with uh, what Commissioner Turner just said. I wanted to ask a couple of questions from the, sh the sheriff. Are you okay? I mean, we have security downstairs. You're you talking about holding? In, right in this room. Yes, sir. We already have security downstairs. One of them can step up. But if we go across the street or somewhere else, uh, we're going to have to have somebody with that jury, not only because it uh, could be dangerous for the jurors because we've had situations in the courtroom over here where they come out of the courtroom and start raising cane and we had to intervene. We are responsible to keep those jurors straight and also the integrity of that jury. I think you're on the next item. You get scared. Oh, small plane for yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me interject there. Now, with that proposal, every Thursday, you're going to have to have a uh, deputy at the elevator and in the hallway because now secured rooms on the second, third floor, and basement that have to be secured are no longer secured because you're going to have people using this as a courtroom. It's going to be a constant flow of traffic. Uh, so it's going to add a minimum to do small claims court at least on the Thursday. Uh, two more deputies that you're going to have to have one in this room, one in the hallway, 
and one to make sure that people aren't going to the third floor or basement to see calm and IT. Uh, so it's going to add two to three more deputies to your staff uh, for moving that into this room. Just want to make sure you're aware of that. We have to use our badge to go to the third floor. I can't get to the third floor. Yeah. At the last meeting, we didn't have security downstairs while we were still conducting our meeting. So that needs to be revised like Ms. York has got that problem solved. That as long as we're meeting in this building, there needs to be someone downstairs to check whoever because we have seen local, national, international news where people come in that might be a little bit ticked off about situations and you need that front line, kind of like an SRO in a school. You need that front line of law enforcement down there. Well, using this as small claims is going to cost you more deputies. But it ain't going to cost you <laughs> it's, uh, whatever. I think this is a smarter move. It's right here in front of your face. May I finish? Yes. Oh, sorry, Bill. No, they didn't. No, not it's like a that. pinball machine. I understand. I understand. I only have two more questions. Um, just wanted to verify, you said something earlier, this is going to be one day a week, so they're going to be meeting here a little more than eight times a year, correct? Just until December. Right. Yeah. But there's four weeks in each month, yeah, yeah. so four times four is 16. Yeah. Just want to make sure that I got it, got it right. Not that not it's a big deal, but I wanted to ask Ms. Was, Edwards. I, okay. uh, I wanted to ask Meredith. Yeah. Four weeks a month, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, I four to ask more than three to be exact. Uh, I wanted to ask... Um, Miss Edwards about a comment that she uh, that, that you just made so you're you're telling us that it's uh, you have a full when it's small claims court you have a full day you'll be using it for nine to four the way that our cases are scheduled right now in small claims court we're able to do a maximum of 25 in the morning and a maximum of 25 gotcha. in the afternoon gotcha I'm good thank you thank you Ms. <laughs> Um, just, I think we have the ability to lock out the basement on the third floor, right? Mm -hmm. With the elevator and the stairways? Yes. So, I mean, people can get the elevator on one and come to two. Yeah. Don't have to be able to go. We can go to three. We can go to the basement. Somebody else gets on that elevator on a court day would be able to come here. Am I correct? Yes. We can do any configuration you the only one, unless they had a permit, they wouldn't be able to get off the elevator on anything except two. So you don't have as, to worry about As to that, I can simply go to the second floor, step over a railing, and go up or down the stairs anywhere I want to. But you can't get in the door. You can't, you can't get in the door. You can't get on the elevator. You can't open the door, interior. Oh. Thomas, what he's talking about is through that doorway, there's a little railing that you could step over, but like you said, you can't, you get, can't, get, you can't open the door upstairs right. or downstairs. Okay. So you need that. I'd like to ask Ms. Edwards, um, for years I handled everything from the United States Supreme Court down to small claims court. Uh, and small claims court was always scheduled, pre-scheduled with 15 minute slots. Why do you have so many people appearing at 9 o'clock or 9.30 in the morning for small claims instead of scheduling those appointments now? It, it makes it so much easier and more efficient to schedule everyone just like every other court hearing where you have a singular docket. And that way you can move back and forth between cases if you need to. When we were um, having small claims court in the basement courtroom, um, it was very difficult to hear continuances. People would be out in the hall. You'd have to get them in. Sometimes they wouldn't hear their name called. It was more like a cattle call. Um, and we really needed to move small claims court to run just like every other court. So we have two dockets now, a morning and an afternoon. And those dockets are divided by both subject matter and types of filers. So instead of appearing for an appointment the schedule, now they sit there all morning. Just like every other court, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm not doing small claims anymore. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, can I finish my comments, please? please. I thought you were through. Yeah, um, the other piece I, I, I was concerned, my initial concern about the request was all of the paraphernalia that's being required for e-courts, and I've been informed that they wouldn't need to permanently install the computer systems and things in front of 
which would mean it'd be in front of our people when we were having a meeting. It just they would bring laptops, run the meeting in here with laptops, and when they were done, it'd be gone. So I mean, basically, it's you know one day a week using a room that nobody else is using. Ms. Short, do we not use this room on regular appearances? I'd have to defer to Tori. Um, requests usually come through her for use of the room. I know we have some child support uses on Friday, but when I had met with Judge Overby, I think we were saying Tuesday. Um, it's Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, I've had Wednesday meetings or Thursday. with municipalities, for example, <coughs> in this room and all kinds of things of that sort. They so, just have to schedule. We'll yeah, we do schedule. Work around. Yeah. We can, right. we can shuffle. Well, I have one comment um, based on what Ms. Edwards says. I think it's probably we need to focus on one day. Wouldn't it make it easy, e easier to, to uh, do your docket and stuff if we focus on one day? I just don't know if a half a day on Tuesday and a half a day on Thursday is going to work out too well for you. To, to use this so That's which, correct. We're just asking for one day. Which day would you like? Um, either Wednesday or Thursday. Ms. Tory, what do you think about Wednesday or Thursday? Is that doable? A board of E&R, when they're having their hearings, are usually in here on Thursday. Thursday. So but they won't be meeting until, the, they won't meet in here until after January 1st. That, oh. that I did speak to the Equalization Board about Oh, that. okay. So they would start they don't back need it. up? They don't need it for okay. the balance of the year on Thursday. Okay. And Jeremy, y'all are done for the year, right? Right, unless there's a, a special meeting call. Okay. So, yeah. It's okay. Just checking. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we approve option one for the uh, courts to use this space one day a week for uh, the uh, uh, small claims hearings and uh, from now through January 1. Then we got to move on to find an option for that time after that. I yeah, request that you specify a day. Thursday. I'll second. Any further comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, <laughs> no. I'm a no. Okay, item number two. Actually, I think we want to, yeah, go through to the yeah. short term. Is that what you meant? Sorry. Right, I think we can move on now to just dis discuss the short-term needs um, so the, the again the one idea that we sort of think we could get done by January 1st is by using the annex for the jury room and using the jury room that is currently in JB Allen for a small claims courtroom I think there's other options that we'll discuss in the long-term plan but quite honestly we can't get any of those done by January 1st so um, to the extent that's what that's a deadline we need to hit um, that's really the only option we have for the short, short term need. Can you kind of just give a description of what you're going to do with that room? Because aren't those rooms, they were future courtrooms in case we were looking at adding or something like that as far as the design? Right. So um, th that's, that's the design of the jury room. And you can see in the back of that room is the jury deliberation area. So that would stay the way it is we wouldn't be changing any of the things in the back of the room it's really just that front of the room which is currently a relatively open space used by the jury we would essentially be custom building a, a bench area in there um, and putting some pews in um, to use as, as a small claims courtroom so um, it doesn't have to be a permanent change but it's a, it's a fair amount of investment I think you'd want to make that a relatively permanent change um, but it wouldn't affect anything else in that building so that's the jury room um, and the other room here in the annex it's just in an open space right now so it's the it's our big conference room that we use on the Graham campus it's the only room we have here where we can fit more than 10 people um, so we have meetings in there but it's really just an open room with folding table folding chairs tables in there it's fairly modular. So the, the big change we need to make to the annex is getting their wireless connectivity in there. So they don't have the state internet in there. The state internet and the county internet are different. They have their own system. So 
don't have a great handle on how long that takes is out of our control, but I think we can get that done by, by January 1st to get the state's internet in there so that they could use it as a jury room. And that's no longer a voting, <coughs> early voting place. <laughs> Hasn't been for a while. That's a good I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in the yeah, they century. Moved it, they I'm moved just it asking to, every they question. They moved it to Graham. That's a good, very good question. Well, the United States of America flips every day I turn around something different. I just want to make sure it's not back to what it was. Yeah, the last two elections were over the Graham. Okay. But we do have a number of irregular gatherings of county employees and things when we use that space. Where would we go with that? I don't have a good option for that. I mean, like I said, that's the only large room we have in town. I mean, we have some other large rooms at the Ag Building on, on the northern campus. Um, what about the new uh, Board of Elections office? We've got a pretty large space upstairs in that, don't we? You could probably fit 15 or 20 in there. Um, usually the gatherings we have over there are larger. Yeah. They're recognitions or things like right. that, and we have 50 people. Um, yeah, we don't have a great option for those. Um, but we'd probably have to move them up to the, to the ag building. Do what? To the agricultural building. Um, we have I'm a large sure. meeting room there. I bet you've got local churches that could work with us on stuff like that. They've got big buildings as far as fellowship halls and things like that. The Civitan over there at the pool where we've done stuff before, back in behind Graham Middle mm -hmm. School, up their schools. All we got to do is ask. That's just more involvement in the community to work together. So I'm happy to uh, let you guys have questions about the short term, or we can just move on to the long term, whichever, whichever well, makes short, sense. The other issue on the short term is the security across the street. I, mean, I understand it's going to be temporary. I've had conversations with the clerk, with the, with Judge Overby. I've had conversations with the DA over the weekend and with the, or this past week with the sheriff. And there are all sorts of complications to just about every option we have. Um, and I, we have officer, we have offices over there, and that's going to be could be a conflict of interest putting the jury in where officers are coming and going. Uh, Plus security. Once again, uh, you're going to have to have somebody with that jury. Uh, you're going to have to cross the road if they come back across the street. Uh, I just, this is me personally. I don't, I don't think that's faced with too many problems using that building. Plus, it takes away the meeting spaces for the, the county where we normally meet. Too. So, the honorable sheriff, I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Um, temporarily, January 1, we've got to have an extra quorum. Um, what do you propose? Yeah, we've got the jury lounge for a courtroom, and we have the jury lounge moved across the street. What other option do we have? I don't know. Yeah, I'm we don't need The county realizes that, that we're growing every day. And when, and when they look to the future, instead of we'll find ourselves right back the same place we're in. Well, that's, yeah. that's question number three. We're not there yet. <laughs> I, I can't come up with another option that's feasible and or affordable. Well, I've heard the same comment. It's not ideal, but it's a short-term solution to get us to a long-term solution. The long-term solution hopefully will be much more ideal. I just remember we went through COVID and we were at the Paramount with court. We've had to really adjust our lives to make this work. So I think we can make this work till we can really make this work. Do you have another suggestion? No. I just don't, I just know what I don't want to do and that ain't talked about yet. Just a bit. I mean, Will there be an opportunity for us to be heard on the uh, consequences of any of these moves? Right now, as to this, we're, we're on the second option. That I'm just talking about the second option. And that space over there, the, the, jury, the jury lounge, which is completely misnamed because it is a compulsory attendance. It's a jury assembly room. That room um, 
has served and, and does serve for many things. Now, it's, it's a grand jury room uh, monthly. It serves for, uh, for some staff meetings before the, the, the courts open. It serves for lunch timing and all of those things. So I believe its true intended purpose has been diminished over the years, over the past 30 years. Uh, that jury and, and our juries, when they come in there, that is a safe space for them. That is a protected space for them. And you can move the assembly of the jury across the street and maybe have a, a deputy walk over and walk back when they are not impaneled. But when that jury is impaneled, when you have 12 or 13 people, when they have a, a, a brief recess in the morning, uh, if there's a matter of evidence to be heard, it's going to take a couple of minutes. They can put it in the, in the deliberation room. It's not ideal. There's no amenities. There's two bathrooms in that deliberation room that nobody will use because they are literally from here to the chair right there. Nobody wants to use the bathroom with 12 people sitting right here. So there's really no, uh, there's no amenities. But there are every day in a, in a trial, the court takes a mid-morning and mid-afternoon break. If there's matters of evidence that uh, take longer than, say, 10 or 15 minutes, the judge will send the jury out for a break. And when they take that break, they go to the jury assembly room, which has amenities. It has two bathrooms that are not right on top of you. It has vending facilities. It has a place that you can sit comfortably and wait. And a lot of people would like it. A lot of people would like that option. It's something that we, we take for granted now and take, the, take for granted that the jurors won't be disturbed. If you take away that space, when there's a break, that jury's going to have to walk right out the aisle past defendants, their families, interested parties, court observers. You have to walk right onto that landing, which is very small. When they're out there and there's a larger break, you can have them right on top of each other with uh, defendants, their families, victims, and their families. Criminal trials, especially serious trials, are emotionally charged. And you cannot expect people, uh, defendants and their families, and victims and their families, to keep those emotions and passions in. And a lot of the defendants are in court because they exercise poor judgment and lack impulse control. And we know that. In my time as DA, we've seen somebody bring a baby stroller in the courthouse and smuggle mace in. Mace of bailiff. We've seen people erupt at jury, at verdicts. We've seen, uh, we've seen the last murder trial we had, a member of the victim's family jumped over and attacked the defendant. The jury was not, thankfully, there. It was on one of these um, hearings outside of their presence. So the trial didn't have to be mistried at that point. But you're going to expect these citizens, who many of whom only come up here to do their civic duty, only come up here once to do jury duty. And they come up here, they come up here nervous just getting a jury summons. And you're going to ask them to step out on that landing with all of these emotionally charged people, go to the same bathroom as these people, stand next to the vending machine as those people, and then go back in the courtroom like nothing happened. I've done this for 25 years. I've had jury trials for 25 years. I know what that means, what that jury room means. And to say, well, on a break you can send them across the street, that's a worse idea. Because you're going to take 12 people, 13 people, take them out the door, out of the courthouse, parade them across the street with big red badges that say juror, and we have that, with an officer, and with the opportunity that we didn't have 30 years ago, which is people taking pictures of them and sending off to whomever uh, to say this is the people that's going to be deciding that case. Tampering, intimidation, and outright danger. That courthouse is full of felons, violent felons, people that you wouldn't expect to be there, sex offenders, who are there not just for their cases, they might be there on a speeding ticket because they've done their time. We have a case right now where somebody is charged with DWI. He's been out of prison because he served his time for attempted murder for two police officers down on Main Street in Graham, the Randy Sellers case. He's going to be coming to our district court on his DWI case. Nobody knows about that. Nobody knows about that he's threatened police. The sheriff knows that. It's a dangerous, dangerous place. And you're going to take the one thing in that courthouse that works properly, the one room where the jurors are protected, and take that away from them? It's not going to affect me. I'm not here to speak because it's going to affect me. 
I'm speaking for that 40-year-old school teacher who's going to have to stand outside while a group of kids go closer and closer and start talking loudly about what they want to see happen. I'm here for the, uh, for the introverted 65-year-old gentleman who has to stand at the vending machine, get his drink, while somebody's behind him commenting loudly on the case. You can't stop that. People don't control their emotions. The sheriff will tell you it's a dangerous place. That courthouse is too small for what we already need. And you're going to tell the juror, it's small, but we're going to force you and compel you to mix and mingle with the worst of the worst and their families. It is a bad idea. I'm here to tell you today somebody's going to get hurt. A, a, a trial will get dis derailed. A trial will, will get mistried. But more importantly, somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm here telling you that today. So when it happens, it will not be on my head. That's my two cents. I'm actually in the middle of preparing motions on the capital trial to be heard Thursday or Friday. So if I could take my leave after questions, I would appreciate it. Before you do, same question that I asked the sheriff. What other option do we have? We may not have an option, and that's the place we find ourselves. But I'm not asked to figure out the options. I, I mean, if that were my job, I would be up all night thinking about it. I know y'all lose sleep at night thinking about it. I know that. I know y'all deal with the public. I deal with the public. So I understand a little bit about what you're going through. So I don't know the answer, but I do know that if we make a small accommodation for a few months, we can maybe work with that, but I've never seen short-term turn to long-term on a reliable basis. And so if we take it away now, we may never see it back. And again, we didn't have that 30 years ago. We didn't have that courthouse 30 years ago. But now we have more people. This county has grown, exploded in population since that building was built. We have social media. We have phones that have better cameras than, than you could buy out people taking pictures. They can take video. They can video people walking in and out. That's why we don't have them in the courthouse. So people won't put them in the trial and take pictures. It's a dangerous place. It's more dangerous. There's no option. Maybe there is. Maybe y'all can find an option. I'm just saying that we don't uh, abandon our jurors now with no plan to go forward. The analogy I'll use is Tars is not going to let go of this vine until he's got another vine. If you, if you abandon these jurors now and you let them fall into, into obscurity, then when something happens, just know that you've been told. I think option three is your vine, as you've described it. That's the longer term, and we've not really discussed that yet. Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, do you have another comment? No, sir. Something was brought to my attention earlier this last, last week, and uh, talking about the possibility of bringing in, and I, I don't even I shudder, my first thought was a remote unit, a mobile unit, could set up outside the court building that could be used maybe for a court space instead of for jury space. I don't know. Would that be something that might work? Again, I, I can just tell you what I know the consequences will be. I can tell you what I know for a fact you're going to see in that building. I, I don't have the answer. Anything that will keep a jury separate and protected as much as possible is a good thing. If you had a remote building, then they would be coming from the jury building outside to get to the remote building still, unless you could connect it in some fashion. Oh, and, and whatever whatever y'all decide, I just want to make you aware of, of, of that that fact and those possibilities. I've got, uh, I'm a novice at best about how to plan and prepare and construct anything. I can ask my wife. Um, it's not something I'm in, but I can tell you the one, the one thing I know about is the dynamics of a jury. Well, the, the remote buildings we were talking about were some of the school buildings. Uh, I forgot which school. Turrentine Middle had Turrentine. a couple of mobile classrooms. Uh, the $50,000 just to relocate it, and that doesn't include any upfitting expense. So, okay. and, uh, from what I understand, they definitely are in need. And I understand that, that uh, Mr. Baker, you've toured those abandoned remote classrooms, have they been maintained? Um, some of them are have been in use. Yeah, they're still in use. They're still next to the school at the ones I looked at at Turrentine, which um, I'm told were the best ones. Um, they are 25-year-old modular classroom units. They they need a little work. 
Are um, they large enough for one unit to hold a jury? Not talking about 12 people, talking about what, 50, 75 people in a jury lounge. Uh, so they are double wide modulars, if that's helpful. I, I don't know the current size of the jury pools that we're calling. Well, the, the jury pools typically are not 70 people, maybe. Uh, on on average, typical. I would say for a regular size jury, it's 50 to 60. Um, when we have a capital murder case or larger trials that have more um, political or public significance, um, it would we would summons more people and when we would have a larger pool, maybe 100. Right now, we have a capital jury expected to be, we expect to start jury selection in a capital case September 16th. Okay. So that's going to be probably double that number of people. And they have arrangements for temporary seating and, and Hold out chairs and things, and that's just that's just how it has to be. I mean, that that's a, an unusual thing, and we don't have to prepare, you know, constantly for that. So it's thankfully a, a very irregular thing. Say 50 to 100 would be a ballpark number. So, so I think you need two Which? modulars for that for that number, which is. Still, I said I think you need two modular units for that number, which. They have an unlimited number of modular right. units they'd be willing to give us. wants to get rid of those modular units. Right. One, would they give them to us? And two, would they help with the uh, cost of moving them? I'm fairly certain they will give them to us. I'm fairly <laughs> certain they will not help us pay for moving them. Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question. We're talking about options. I have a different thought. Um, Judge Overby, the, if we go back to what it is that that you would want to add on January 1. That's a courtroom to do small claims all week? That's correct. Yes, okay, sir. so essentially you need a small claims courtroom. For January, for, we need an additional courtroom and that would be that would be small claims, yes sir. Okay. Because we would use all three of the courtrooms in this building for judges. And then the two that we have designated in the J.B. Allen for judges. So, thank you. Cool. Um, Mr. Baker, is there, let's assume that, that Let's assume that, um, well, the tax office downstairs in this building has the benefit of security that already exists. Is there space in the, in the tax room, the tax area downstairs, that could approximate the size of the jury assembly area that we see on the, on the board now? There is, and let me... Let me show you that. I kind of had that as a long-term proposal because getting it done by January 1st is not something I comfortable guaranteeing right. but let me walk you through that option and we can talk can about I ask a timing. question just yeah. before you move to that um, mr. Boone can you help us understand the difference in the jury situation at this courtroom as compared to the jury situation at the old courthouse in the circle because there are trials up there as well yeah and, and we use the old courthouse infrequently but uh, you know that was the only option that we well not the only but was the the, the, the main option they had for criminal cases back before 1994 um, it is not in a much better place. There's no vending area for them, but there is. Well, I've been in Sutton's, and the red badges come in. Exactly. But there, there is one. There, there is one. One important difference about that. At least in that building, the jurors, when they are in the deliberation room, when they're on a break, they can go down a back hallway, and they can go out. They, they don't have to at any point. Well, they have to. I think coming back in because of security. But leaving the courthouse, they don't have to interact with the people who are in the courthouse and the families there. There's a separate landing that they go down on one side and literally the opposite side is where the jurors can go down. So they, basically the jurors over there at least have the ability to remain separate. Over here, you take that option away, they are compelled to either sit in that jury deliberation room or they're going to have to walk out on the landing uh, and, and with everybody else. So ironically enough, the old courthouse has been here 100 years, is actually better suited uh, now then this one would be if that change is made so mr. Baker I know you're going we're going with this this is now this is proposal two of the long-term plan right okay and it's four million dollars but what, what I want to assume is that if you don't concentrate on this all of the space but just the space in blue that says small claims courtroom uh, how many people are in there Oh, well, there are currently about five offices in there, okay. um, but it is essentially a large open room with just some, some modular walls, so, so this could be opened up and so make one we, big room. if we talk about 
intermediate, just the small claims courtroom, not changing this into additional court space, just on this option, then you would have to move five, you'd have to change that room around to a courtroom and you'd have to move five people. Yeah. I think we should look into this as an option for an immediate term uh, solution. Question, follow up. If you do that for what Craig just said, what's going to happen to that actor? Is that like once you do something else long run, what's going to happen to that? Is this a temporary four to five million dollar fix? No, so, not what I'm talking about. Okay. So the, the, the four million dollar fix is because the folks that we move out of the room don't have anywhere to go. So it's about acquiring somewhere else to move those people. And over the long term, I would you'd, you'd not want to move half of the tax department. You'd want to move the whole tax department um, if you're going to move them. So as a short-term basis, mm -hmm. can we get those four or five people out of there and make a small claims courtroom? I think we can do that. I don't, right off the top of my head, I have a place for those four or five people to go. But we could work on it. Um, I think it makes sense if it were part of a long-term plan to, to do the rest. You know, if you're going to take this baby step to get that ready for January 1st, and then, okay, we're going to acquire another building, we're going to have a place to move the tax department, that makes sense. It, it is going to be a little difficult to find somewhere to move them. I don't have that place right now, and it's, um, it's, it's doable by January 1st. I'm not sure that it makes a ton of sense for just for a year or six months or something. It's like we're a Rubik's Cube. We just keep flipping colors to try to get all the same thing, and uh, but it's very expensive. We should buy them all. Bill, you know him. Hmm? <laughs> so if you're, this is a temporary solution? This is a short-term solution that could become long-term um, if we wanted to go this direction. So, so where, and there's nobody in that space now? There are people in that space right now. Where would we put that? I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to work on it. We don't have empty offices here. Um, so we could find somewhere to put them for a while. But uh, again, as a long-term solution, we need tax employees to be with the tax department. So I need to find somewhere for that to happen. Um, acquire another building over time and, and move and move the entire tax department or or make that courtroom there a temporary solution that it would go away so that we could put the tax folks back in. I, I don't want to interrupt, but may I, may I speak briefly? Yes. Well, and just for uh, clarification, so we've got six persons in the blue space there. You barely but, hear you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll speak up. We have six persons in the blue space there, but we also have a passageway into the other building. So we have four offices that access through there. And my presumption is you don't want our staff walking back and forth through the courtroom to get to those offices. So really, we, we, we've got um, eight appraisal staff attached to the other building, six staff there, so we'd need to find the place for 14 staff members under this scenario. Let me ask this question. If we reverse the idea, you courtroom in what is the old Ag building, and the jury lounge stay as is, is that doable? Sorry, you saying yeah, the sheriff's not going to be happy no matter what because he's going to have to have extra personnel, <clears throat> either small clean store on the elevators and whatever, uh, and with the thirsty usage of this room. And additionally, he's going to have to have extra deputies for the additional courtroom, whether it be in the current jury lounge or across the street in the old ag building. Um, so thank goodness for adding deputies. But it does not solve your problem. But if you reverse that and put the courthouse in the old ag building, the extra courtroom on January 1 and leave the jury lounge as is, is that doable? So uh, I think one of the reasons we didn't go that direction was um, the old ag building, which just for clarification, that what we call the that county office building annex now used to used to be the, the ag building. So uh, that's what he means. It's the annex building. You could put courtroom there 
court in there, but we don't have any of the security apparatus in that building currently. Um, and it's not just about posting a deputy. I'll let the sheriff speak to it, but it's not like posting one deputy there. We don't have metal detectors. We don't have lockers for phones, any of that. So it's a fairly significant upfit, I think, to get court in a new building. Um, this and you almost would have to move some of the current sheriff's space out of that building. <clears throat> Aren't we moving some of them over to the uh, old Board of Elections building anyway? Isn't, aren't we still working on that? All the, the public defender's office got the Board of Election building. Big part. Public oh, defender's right. office is in the public. The, right now. But that's temporary. Yeah, right now. <coughs> that's temporary. How long is it going to be before we can get them into the building we've acquired? <coughs> Brian, do you know when we're projected to be able to move the Yeah, the, so center? renovating the building south of us on South Maple Street is where the public defenders are going to go. It's taking a little longer than we wanted to, but hopefully this year. Um, and they can move out of there, out of the old Board of Elections building, and the sheriff could make some capacity in there. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts. It's like a game of musical chairs. Yes, it is. <laughs> Brian, I've got one question for you. Uh, just because the building next door, the one that we bought that was full of offices, mm -hmm. is there any way to put the tax department in that building? So we have all of that space earmarked for the yeah. public defender's okay. office. Okay, no worries. Just thought yeah. I'd ask. So uh, I will say, as we consider this as a more long-term option, there are some buildings in town they could be acquired relatively quickly for the tax department. Um, they're not inexpensive, but there's some that I've looked at that would be a very good fit for the tax department. We could get them out relatively quickly if that's what we wanted to do. Um, Talk numbers. We would probably need to add an additional closed session if the board would like to get into specifics about what properties might be available and what costs look Maybe like. Add what? Add an additional closed session if the board would like to explain explore specific properties and talk right. about some pricing we could be prepared today. to to include that today without well, going into closed session can you give me a number that's not less than so i have a number on the board of four million dollars for the long-term fix acquiring a new building getting it set up for the tax department getting that set up for the courts system i think that's a good long-term estimate um and this is already a court building anyway, so it wouldn't require new security. That's the advantage. This building already has the security apparatus, and you're saving that long-term cost of security. Up to the clerk. Question. The small, the blue, it would be redone, structured for a courtroom. The golden color, that's not going to be here anymore for tax department if you buy a location to move the entire tax department somewhere, like we had Medicap pharmacy where everybody got to drive through and plenty of parking and it was okay we didn't purchase that mm -hmm. and um that right there so the whole part of this lower building will become court and court affiliated stuff clerks blah 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 that kind of stuff except for seacom so seacom so seacom's in the basement yeah so this would just be the first floor seacom's in the basement we're on the second floor i wouldn't think there'd be any changes there we do have the budget department downstairs, which is a very a small department of three or four people we probably need to keep room for here or find another solution for. But for the most part, that entire first floor is the tax department. So well, if we so move the- part of the clerk's operation would move into that golden space? Up there. I have to ask the clerk. Well, I don't, we haven't gotten through any of this. A conversation with the clerk? No, this was quite honestly envisioned as a long-term option. So we haven't done any uh, office moving or discussion about who, who would go where, what they would, what services they put there. Mr. Chairman, I recommend we table the discussion about the in, in, uh, short-term option until the next meeting where we can have some more of these conversations and then move to the, the long-term conversation here. And I'll circuit that much. Just one more thing. If this is a consider, in a year or two, are you going to want to build something huge because that's not going to work too? Is this a temporary thing because it looks like we're just it, it just looks like we're just <laughs> roll the dice and wherever it falls it falls but we're spending a lot of money 
I just want it to be effective and effective for a long time instead of just, oh, let's buy this, oh, let's remodel this because that's government is known to do that because it's not my checkbook, it's some imaginary person's. And I just don't want to spend money like this if this isn't going to be for good and for years and years like what we know we need. I mean, it, you know, we, we got out of that courthouse, we spent bukus of money on it because it's pretty. And we can't really use it as a big courthouse to keep everything because we have so much crime. That's the one thing we don't seem to look at is the crime. We just keep spending money for crime. And somehow, what are we doing about crime? We can't catch it. And, but we can spend money to make more room for it. It just, I mean, I'm not the only person I'll say it. What the crap? It's just, I don't see, I don't want to fix something temporarily if it's just that temporarily. I mean, I'll go big or go home. That's the way I look at life. Do it right instead of doing all, it's like a diet. I'm going to eat everything around it till I get to the ice cream. Then I'm going to eat the ice cream. And so don't stop, stop, just wait a minute. That's <laughs> option three you're talking about. Well, I, that's another whole ball game. I just, um, I just, I don't, I just think we are just reaching for anything to fix a problem right now when we're really not addressing the problem, and that is crime. We are out of control. We are out of control. But we can build another building for crime, and we can, you know, we can do all this stuff for crime, and it's just money, money, money. But people are still killing each other, and they're still overdosing. So, but, but it's not just crime, too. We're it is. It's everything. I know. So I've been married to the court system for 35 years. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's just, it's very frustrating as a citizen to sit back and just say, well, we'll move this room, we'll move that room, four to five million, and we still got the same basic problem. You know, we don't, we don't want a double wide for something, but it's good enough for our children to have class in when it leaks. So don't even talk about double wides to me. Judge Overy, I would only call him Terry Johnson, but I think he'll yield. I'm, I'm so done. sorry. No. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the ability to have small claims in here one day a week for the rest of the year. We have seen the increase in our court time since Odyssey has taken yeah. over. Uh, and one of the examples I wanted to give you, actually our fifth judge will be moving into a civil spot, not into a criminal spot using that uh, fifth judge for that spot. And then we'll rotate through like we rotate through. We rotate every week. So right now half of our time district court judges are in criminal court, half our time are in civil court. One of the things I've come up um, against this year has been termination of parental rights cases. I have one going on right now that we've had four days for in four months. That's permanency for five children that we've not been able to get to permanency. It doesn't have anything to do with crime, unfortunately. It has to do with parents who are not doing what they need to do for their children. The other thing that we absolutely want to do and are looking forward to do is recovery courts, which is a little bit about crime, but also about addiction. And we know how awful that is. And we've been blessed in this county to have everybody behind adding recovery courts. But without additional court space, we're not going to be able to get to those termination of parental rights like we need to. We're not going to be able to get to recovery courts like we want to. And so we are up against um, a very unfortunate situation that right now we have eight courtrooms and we have eight judicial officials that hold court in there almost every single day of the week. Some may finish early, some may not, some may go to five. We can't bank on somebody finishing early in order to get another session in there. Um, and so we absolutely have to have additional courtroom January 1st to do all the things we need to do, taking care of the children of this county, taking care of our addicts and getting them sober and holding them responsible and also dealing with things we deal with right now, which is civil, custody cases, divorce cases, and our criminal dockets, which are not increasing and not decreasing. We're kind of holding steady right now. But we've got to address all of those things. And right now, we just don't have very good options, what we need for January 1st. And I just want to implore all of you to think thoughtfully about it and to provide our citizens and our court staff with the best solution you can come up with. Yes. I have to agree with Ms. Thompson on one thing, and a lot of it, I think, is because our system is so clogged with cases. Uh, you know, they're running them through, and many times the whole picture of that crime is, is not shown to the judges because they're trying to run the cases through. Our DA, I guarantee you, is beating his head against the wall with a number of cases on the street. We, have had a history here, not unnecessarily under this administration of commissioners, 
kicking the can down the road. Folks, this county is growing tremendously. Uh, call volume. Our call volume averaged somewhere around 2,000 and some a week. Call volume just for the sheriff's office. That don't mean Medvin. That don't mean Graham. That don't mean Bronze and Elon or Gibson. Please. If we're going to do something, we need to build for the future so we won't be right back in here again going through the same problems we're going through. And I, I don't envy y'all a bit because of the decision you're, you're going to have to make. But if we're going to do anything, let's build for the future so we're not back in here 10 years from now, 5 years from now. Uh, it's, you know, the effects of the justice system not having room is more than you'll ever know. I'm telling you, it's more than you know. Go back to what the judges, our judge, Superior Court judges say. Uh, we have got to build for the future, and we can't sit back. I'll tell you what, putting mobile homes, you know, maybe for a short term, but not for long. It's, it, yeah, it's not. It, it's not <coughs> for the long term. We need to study this thing thoroughly and make a decision and move forward. Period. Paragraph. It's kind of like what we did with the college. Mm -hmm. We stepped up. We've got a new public safety training center going up. We built the um, uh, Center of Excellence, Biotechnology Center of Excellence. I mean, we're a growing county, rapidly growing. We're one of the top, rapidly. one of the fastest growing counties in the state of 100 counties. And uh, I don't know what those numbers are going to look like. I guess we'll find out later this week. But. Um, we, we've got a challenge, folks. We really do. Well, as the county grows, you're going to need new DAs, probably another judge down the road, more people with the clerk's office, and we, we're going to find ourselves in the same situation uh, five, ten years down the road. Yeah, we can't. We can't. We and can't I like I say, I don't envy y'all. I know y'all. You know, y'all are trying to save the taxpayers' money, and so. But let me tell you something. Sometimes. We have to bow our neck and do what's right. And like I say, uh, well, I've heard too many I, times that that's I wouldn't want to be in y'all's <laughs> situation. Uh, but, you know, there's tough decisions. But I have to make tough decisions as a sheriff sometimes. And it ain't the, the, the best for me politically, but it's the right thing to do. And that's what we got to do. Well, I've heard too many times, Sheriff, that the clerk, or the court building, J.B. Allen Court Building was not big enough when it was finished in '94. Well, that don't matter. Go and walk through. This ain't '94. This is 2024. Right. That ain't our problem. Our problem is right now. I know. I'm just saying. I know, but should have, would have, could have, just don't work. Situation where we weren't looking far enough into the future. When we did that, we've got to take a different approach and look at the future, because what we do today impacts people that are going to be having to try and solve the same problem in 5, 10, 15 years if we don't address it. Right. So like the clerk, clerk's office ought to be under one roof. Oh yeah. The DA's office, office, one roof. The judge's office, one roof. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor, a second. All in favor of... What's the motion? Why? Wait a minute. <laughs> What's the, the motion, Craig? The motion is to table the conversation oh, okay. about the short-term proposal uh, to the next meeting and then move forward with the rest of Mr. Baker's presentation on the long term. And I did the second. Okay. We just don't, we just can't. I agree. We'll table it once. Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the motion to table signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That portion is tabled to our next meeting, and the date of that next meeting is? 19th. August. Is 19th? Mm -hmm. I think that's correct. Two weeks from today. Yes. All right. You're, you're father with the uh, longer range, please. Okay. So to reset, we had three long-term options. The first of those was to give the annex building to the court system. The second of those is to give the first floor of this building to the court system. Um, sorry. Uh, and the third option is to build a new building. 
um, this new building is the only way that we are going to get a two to four courtrooms that was called for in the 2019 facility plan. We don't have any other of these plans that are going to get us long-term additional courtroom space. Um, you guys, I'm sure remember the authorized us to go back to CRA, our architects, in the spring and do a third attempt to design a building that was uh, at a price tag that sounded better to us. That um, wasn't in our packet, was it? I don't know what was in we your did, packet. We no. did not upload the PowerPoint. Right. No. I can't read. I don't want you to read it. You know, it's really so with the details of what this looks like, we can get into. I really just want you to uh, think about the concepts because these plans are not real plans. They're just conceptual plans. Okay. It's just a price tag and a, and a basic concept of what we could get for, for these dollar figures. So this is an additional building would be on the west side of the courthouse um, where the parking lot is now, a first floor of office space, a second floor with two courtrooms, and if we did a third floor, it would be as exactly the same as that, so that would be four courtrooms. Um, so that's essentially the shape of a new building we could get for a price tag that we were comfortable with. Well, it's, I don't know if we're comfortable with it or not, but this is the best price tag we think we can get to accomplish <laughs> these goals. So, a lot better than that million dollars. It's, it's less than it was. So the two-story addition is $28 million. These are pretty approximate numbers. We've got a lot of choices to make in between here and there that are gonna affect that number. Um, we could do the three-story addition for $37,000. Um, that brings us back to the original facility plan, would get the courts out of this space, out of the civil court space as well, um, and give make this available for county office building renovation. We haven't priced that in a very long time, so I don't have a dollar figure that i um, comfortable giving you there. Um, but this is the long-term solution. If we want to move forward with this, again, a lot of design decisions, a lot of conversations to be had with the court staff and the judges to figure out how to make that building work for them. But we, we went to our architects and said, give us a, a picture, give us a square footage, um, and give us a dollar figure. And this is the best we've been able to come with for those. Question. Okay, is this 37 million new plus doing this, moving the tax department? No, this, so this is, this 37 million is to construct a new building, a third story building. It's gonna take some of your parking. It's gonna yes. take some of your parking. Okay. Um, that's four courtrooms, that's office space on the bottom floor, um, that's a long-term fix for some new courthouse space. That's with a third floor that's unfinished. No, that's a finished third floor. What would have? What would? Right now, we don't need a finished third floor, though, right? But we could finish one at some point. In '94, you didn't need more courtrooms. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you're gonna, don't think about not needing. You better think about fifth floor. So because the way we're growing, we we need ambulances too. Don't forget those poor guys. If your goal is to move the civil courts out of this building, then you need all those courts. Okay. Yeah. okay, all right. That leads to this. Why you need to remodel this if you're going to be building that? What's remodeling this for? You wouldn't. He just said we was. So, the, again, the, the old facility plan was to give the civil court building to the county. I don't know that it needs a drastic remodel, but currently it's three courtrooms, which aren't that, we don't need those as county offices. So if we gave that to county staff for future growth there, we'd remodel those to a certain extent to make them suitable for county office. Yes. But that's not a priority as compared to all these courtrooms. Correct. That's why we haven't priced it. It's, You're it's, saying that it's be down the road. Until after we did the court space. Correct. Correct. Yeah, you'd build a courtroom building, you'd move everybody over there, then you've got some space here we could look at renovating for county office staff. Is there any land for sale like that could build something that could really cater to what you need plus parking that you wouldn't be band-aiding basically that we're adding on we're looking like we're doing the double wide thing like the school does this is what we're doing and I you know I just don't want our government buildings that house what they do to look like well they added on it's like the house and then it has a upstairs over a garage that's added on that's perfectly fine 
but we've seen with school buildings when you add on your HVAC is a nightmare I'm just asking these questions because they need to be asked. So it's certainly possible for us to acquire a new space and build an entirely new court complex. That's doable. It's incredibly expensive. Um, this model is much more similar. It's going to be 10 times that. Um, this, uh, this is more like what hospitals do. You build a wing. You fill it up as you grow, as you have finances available, you add to that to accommodate growing space needs. So I don't think it's unusual for us to add space to a core complex. But Brian, adding space as in a building is not adding space as into your parking. Your land is down here, it's just, it's just a little square piece of grass and we're trying to build as much on it as we can and in a couple of years we're gonna go, man, we might should have thought about moving out like Rockingham or Harnett or some of these other. You talk about vision, Steve. You got to think more than 24 months if that's what you're looking at because the taxpayer is going to pay for either one of these choices. You build a complex outside of Graham, what's it going to do to downtown Graham? Crime has nothing to do with downtown Graham. Well, this the, is the courthouse. The, the most important limitation is the location and proximity to the jail. Right. I mean, for criminal courts, you, you've got to have a corridor, or else you're going to be putting people in vans and taking them to the courthouse down the road. So that's issues. that's a big security issue. And Brian, doesn't don't these numbers include the estimated renovation for JB Allen? I think they do. Yes, yeah. for the JB Allen building. Yeah. Yes, they include that. So you build you build a an addition essentially, move in there, and then once you have those up and running, you can do a serious renovation of the JB Allen. Right, right. Now, what does that need to be? What are you talking about, renovation, J.B. Allen? What does that need to be? Like, does it need, like, what are you talking about? So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a mix. Uh, they, the office space that they currently have for the judges is not intended for the amount of judges that they're going to have. Um, the... The jury room, again, is could be turned into another courtroom if you wanted to put the jury in the new building. I mean, there's there's some options here, but the, the plan the entire time has been build some new space, get that built up, move some court functions in there, and you could do what renovations you need to in the J.B. Allen building. I don't know that that, that does not need a total teardown and, and rebuild. It probably needs some tweaks after 30 years. Um, but you'd have some flexibility to do that if you had some new space to move people out and you could remodel the old building. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is appropriate. I have a question. Is it appropriate that I ask a question? Um, if you're talking about an addition of four courtrooms, but moving three courtrooms out of this building into the four courtroom addition with our fourth courtroom that we need January 1st, this is not an addition. You're just moving court right. space to a different place. The other thing is what Mr. Baker was alluding to is we're going to have a fifth judge January 1st and we're taking our district court judge's conference room and we're losing that, which is also a bailiff meeting space, breakfast and lunch for them, um, and turning that into a, a fifth judge's office because we don't have a fifth judge's office available and we can't add on to that. But I just want to be very clear that if we move, if the judges, if the courtrooms move out of the civil annex building, we're not getting four additional courtrooms. In so this, I mean, we're getting just get a one. New one. We're right. getting one additional courtroom, which we're going to have anyway in January. Gotcha. Judge so, Oakland, let, let me address that. Yes, sir. Um, one of the 37 million, we already have 10 covered. We have 10 million currently set aside. Okay. So we're really looking at 27 more. I said in the very beginning. Don't add a two or three story, add four stories. You pick up two additional courtrooms and you're looking at roughly 10 more million than the 37. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at 47 million minus 10, but it's much, much longer range sure. than we're talking about today. Sure. Uh, each to go with the 37 million, we price that out. Uh, to go to the 27 million, uh, it was going to cost us an additional, roughly, according to Susan Evans, I think, a penny extra on the tax rate. Um, would not be this year, would be in years in the future. To do 37 million, 
it would be 1.57 million, uh, 1.57 pennies for a hundred dollar evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, I just think we're looking too short term. Uh, eventually, we have one of the lowest tax rates, and I have voted against tax increases consistently. And I want to keep the taxes as low as, low as possible. But at some point, we've got to put on our thinking hats. We cannot move the court system mile, 10 miles down the road and have the jail here. Uh, it's just not practical. Uh, and I want everything in one single building, as uh, was mentioned earlier, right now, schedule a case for hearing. Is it going to be in the historic building? Is it going to be in the annex building? Is it going to be in the J.B. Allen building? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have an advantage as a hometown lawyer, mm -hmm. but having healthy attorneys coming in and the witnesses and everybody coming in from out of town, mm -hmm. I think we need to also not take a vote on this item today, mm -hmm. but I think we need more hard numbers on three and four stories. Absolutely. I, I will address Commissioner Thompson about the one having it one building, what yeah. you were talking about. That's under the 2019 evaluation, we had um, an option for that, and it was using the parking lot of J.B. Allen to build it, so we would lose parking during the building time. Right. We'd still be able to use the J.B. Allen during that building time. It was a four to five story using the natural lay of the land, um, and then demolishing the J.B. Allen to make a parking lot. So those would all be accomplished in that, and it is um, quite expensive. We don't go outside of Graham. We're close to the sheriff's department. Um, we have everybody under one roof, which is great for the DA, for the public defender, for the sheriff, for security. And instead of having three different um, metal detectors in three different buildings and that spread out, we could consolidate in one place. So there is that option. It was there under the two, uh, 2019 evaluation, but yes. As Judge Overby has just indicated, we already own one of the houses uh, what is that street? Pine Street. Pine Street. Pine, Pine Street. Pine Street. <coughs> uh, and the other house between the one we own currently, uh, the lady passed, I'm sorry, passed away. Uh, it's in a state now. So we could buy an addictional, basically vacant, abandoned house right now and add parking. That's so beautiful. I think that's a longer term issue sure. but these things are solvable but we've got to be willing to take a step mm -hmm. mr chairman i've been asking i've been pushing for us to try and find some of that property out there and buy so we can move west in that area for a number of years too and i had some conversations with the clerk earlier this week or, or again last week um too about the issue of uh um i hate to have one of those moments <laughs> Uh, there were so many things we talked about, and there was it had to do with the uh, with with the oh with getting the clerk operative options around all the different spaces they're in. So, I mean, she's running an operation in three different locations, and um, try and, and she's gonna if if you. If you one of the things she came up with is that there's not a conference room for them to use in the court, in the uh, J.B. Allen Court building, so they use the jury lounge. Or it's not jury. It's actually labeled a jury room, not jury lounge. They use that jury room for their conference space and a multiple different groups up there use it for meeting space. I mean, there's a we are we're out of space, folks. That's all there is to it. We're out of space. May I recommend, or I'll make a motion that we table this issue as well for our next August meeting. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Court room folks, we're going to move and hopefully come back in two weeks. And we're not telling you to leave, <laughs> which can if you like. Okay, we're now going to what was marked 7A.
uh, and is now 7B, is the tourism option. Board officials, thank you for appearing. Thank you. Who's handling that? I think Grace Van de Visser. Good morning, commissioners. Um, this first part here for our re We'll um, just discuss uh, reappointment, and that is uh, Tina Corey's position. She's been on our board um, as a representative for um, our accommodation um, position, and uh, she is seeking a second term. Actually, that, that one's already been approved on your consent agenda, so this item is oh, just for I'm two sorry. current Keep me straight. Keep me straight. My apologies. No this problem. is for one position. And feel where there what three or four options. Yes. So my apologies on that. Um, I guess my head was still all around Brian's uh, presentation there. Um, but yes. So we've had uh, multiple um, applicants, and the first one I'd like to discuss is the tourism industry related applicant um, position. Um, this is a full uh, two years, and our recommendation um, for that would be uh, Miss Stephanie Williams. Um, she is with Alamance Chamber. And um, she has sat on our board previously. Um, she um, handles um, economic uh, development um, and small, uh, small business and entrepreneurial um, position at the chamber. And um, she is very knowledgeable about tourism and uh, would be a huge asset to return to our board. Um, so that would be the first one. Um, the second one is an unexpired term. Um, and we, from the remaining folks that are there, um, my recommendation would either be Ms. Kim Willard or um, Anna Rooney. Um, and so one, um, one is with Hand Pottery out of Burlington, and that would be Ms. Rooney. Um, and Ms. Willard is with Alamance Arts. Um, both would be wonderful to have on board. Um, and I'm sure you're you know, familiar with both of them, um, or at least their organizations. So um, Ms. Willard, Alamance Arts, uh, that organization is well uh, developed and um, very active in the community and with the municipalities. Um, so that would um, provide us a, a great, continue to provide us a great partnership um, there. Um, and then Ms. Rooney um, representing Hand Pottery. Um, that pottery um, has been opened, um, or that business has been open for several years in downtown Burlington. Um, and they're, you know, trying to get more involved with the community. Um, so that gives them an opportunity to see what we do, uh, learn a little bit more, and how we can expand um, in the scope of a pottery and bring folks here, as North Carolina is well known for pottery as well. Um, so I think both um, would be wonderful, um, but I will leave that to the board or the commissioner. Chairman, I move that we appoint Stephanie Williams and Anna Rooney to the TDA. Second. Uh, uh, Stephanie Williams was already approved on the consent agenda. No, 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 no. no. that was not. That was no. Tina that's Corey. A, that's Miss Corey. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'll second Craig's motion. I already have. Okay. <laughs> I will not second Craig's motion. For, for both <laughs> Stephanie and Miss Rooney. I'm in agreement. <laughs> it helps you. Any. you Do we have any other discussion? We have. Stephanie Williams and Anna Rooney, Anna Rooney as is your motion. Yes, sir. Anna and Ms. Carter did the second. And, and, and Ms. Thompson. We were half. Okay. Yeah, second and a third. Yeah. Ms. Clark, your option is to who the second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Please tell all three look forward to their service. Okay, next item is 7B. Um, that says to the radios and uh, Ms. Evans, I think you're up. Yes, good afternoon, or still morning. Good morning, commissioners. <laughs> I love guys. Um, before you this morning is a reimbursement resolution for our emergency radio uh, purchase. If you remember during the budget, we talked about this project and what that will do is replace the emergency radios for our CECOM Sheriff's Office uh, departments so that they can stay in communication. 
this project was approved during the budget process. The resolution before you allows us to go ahead and start that process, and then we would seek an installment financing and reimburse ourselves from those proceeds. Motion to approve. Second. Comment before we make. I'm saying that these new radios will have an AB switch, which allows us to go on the current Viper system, and additionally, the uh, Arlington system. Is that fact or fiction? Is that correct, Sherry? I'm looking at you. I'm not sure. I've not heard that piece of it. I think that they can do that now with their current programming. Um, but this is really so that they will be able to utilize the Viper system. Um, in July of next year, the Viper is running out of channels, and so they are going to make an upgrade that would expand the number of channels that they have or the number of radios. And if we do not do this upgrade, our current radios will not work with that expansion. Thank you. So, yeah. All right. Point out to everybody, July 13th was an important day. Butler... unable to communicate local law enforcement and the uh, Secret Service nobody was able to talk to each other we've got to have current radios um, that's just inexcusable and I do not want that to be Alamance County Amen. have a motion second any other comments all in favor signify by saying aye, aye. aye. any opposed Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Can't imagine. Yes, Commissioners, I wanted to let you know that uh, the State Board of Elections came to Elements County on July 19th to assess our elections department, our facility, security, personnel, um, all the staffing, and they passed with flying colors. Uh, we wanted to thank you for acquiring the building for them, the security measures that have been put in place. And so they are ready uh, for this fall's um, presidential election. The state does these assessments when we have a new director in place and we have a large upcoming election. And so this was our chance to show them that we are indeed prepared and ready for November. That was a great opportunity with that building next year. It's made great that work so much better. Yeah. We got out of a lot of rubbish space with it, too. We have everything in one place. All of our storage needs now can be accommodated there as well. So thank you for that. That's all I had. I think we're adjusting your closed sessions based on some feedback uh, during our discussion. So the county attorney will have some additional closed sessions for you. Do we want to have um, county commissioners reports next or our closed session? I think the agenda is set up such that you would give your remarks now and then I would propose my closed sessions. All right. I'm good with that board. What is your decision? Well, let's go ahead and get that done. All right. Mr. Turner. Uh, nothing for me at this time. Thank you. Mr. Carter. No comments right now. Ms. Thompson. This is um, a base of the Cummings High School Stadium, as you can see. Just that little bit was holding up that beam, and there are a bunch of them, the whole bottom practically. And um, that just shows wear and tear of our facilities and how they can just kind of get to where they're... Imagine a full football game going at it, and the stadium falls in. We see that a lot of times on news, and it's horrible. It can be deadly. And it just can be so bad. We were so lucky. Thank you, Lord, for that not happening. But um, we just we just can't let things like that erode and, and get to that point. I was so. told just earlier that there were actually two of those columns that were actually eaten completely through. Yes. And we all like to stomp when we own the bleachers, <laughs> so we're lucky. <laughs> I see that. Uh, just, it's just something else. Now that's the item that we gave sixty thousand dollars to renovate. Is that correct? Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred twenty-five. I think was the cost on that. So that's already been funded by us. Right. Yes. By the taxpayer. It ain't my checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> so it ain't no us here. It's Alamance County. That's right. Well, if you want to pay for it on your own, you're Well, if I had it, John, 
the whole flipping system would be fixed, and there wouldn't be no arguments or anything like that. Mr. Lane, so. I have nothing. And I do not either. Mr. Chairman, real quickly, I think just to add to that, I, I understand after talking to uh, the chair of the uh, Board of Education that the Cummings bleachers um, should be finished by the 16th of August on the home side. Their first home game is the 23rd, so that would be in time for that. I, I understand there's also been some uh, concern about the Eastern mm -hmm. uh, High School bleachers, and I understand, again, that those are plan to be completed. The homes, the wayside is already completed at Eastern and the home side should be completed by the home opener as well. You know, such comments were made by the only guy large enough to, to play football. <laughs> uh, Long time. Steve has given me a look. <laughs> and I know, Bill, you play football. And we Back when I played, you didn't have to be that big. In the early 80s, we were so Okay. Uh, county attorney. All right, nothing for open session today, but uh, hang on, I've got a couple of closed session proposals. First, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A6, I would ask the board move into closed session to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee. Further, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A5, I would ask the board move into closed session to establish or to instruct public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of public body in negotiating the amount of compensation and other material terms of an employment contract or proposed employment contract, as well as to instruct the public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the potential purchase of the real property described as parcel numbers 145816 and 145817 owned by Almets Farmers Mutual Fire Insurance, parcel numbers 145839 and 145790 owned by Bank of America, and 144074 parcel number, uh, that parcel number owned by 832 South Main LLC for use as additional office space for existing county functions. Finally, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, I ask the board move into closed session to consult with the attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will advise the board on ongoing legal matters, including the Wells v. Johnson matter, and that's uh, Middle District 23 CV 427. That's all I have. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion. Yeah. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we're in close second. Thank you. And we'll move. I have had my seat. Don't wait. <laughs> Don't look. Uh, we took no action to report at this point. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. A motion, second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> We're Thank you. All right. Easy peasy. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 
1-800-224-27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.